So in this film we're going to be looking at uh, finishing an image. Uh, specifically what we've got is from one of the uh, Academy films that we created with a model called Lee J. We're in the studio and basically in a small set and we're just using a simple pop-up background. But obviously in this case we want more of the actual uh, background filling the scene without having to actually just crop into the model and things really. So what we're going to do, um, first of all we're going to just take this JPEG and we're going to just open it into Photoshop. Um, that was just actually there from the bridge window to begin with so uh, once it's in that kind of full screen mode all I've got to do is press the O button on the keyboard and then basically it opens it up uh, now you can see in the background we had this 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 one ready and I haven't kind of uh, practiced this or everything else I'm just going to give you a, a kind of idea on how I would first look at it and kind of try and finish it off straight away the first thing would be photograph the background without the model in place and then basically uh, almost kind of strip her into the back, uh, background it would be quicker okay um, this is just a pop-up kind of background and it's obviously limited in its size so we want to kind of just get into it straight away and start to actually kind of create uh, Photoshop has some amazing kind of AI tools now so the first thing that I would do is basically just go in and just kind of select around the image and I'm just going to hit the backspace and in this case it brings up the fill dialog box and uh, as you can see here and it's got content aware as it's kind of set in so if I just hit the enter key at this point it's going to actually kind of guesswork sub something and as is as you can see it does an excellent job straight away so this isn't going to be a very long film is it okay but I want to kind of just do it in a few ways for you so let's do the left hand side now do exactly the same thing remember from the dialog box you've got options here to choose what it's going to be as far as the fill command I've just left it on content aware fill and then it's basically going to do its job now because we're so far away from the subject we're pretty much kind of expecting it to do its job pretty good as it did when we're get very very close to uh, more sub subjects above in the good old days of AI in Photoshop um, artificial intelligence of course uh, we would have had a problem there because it would have kind of been cloning in the top of the head and so on but you can see straight away that's actually done a pretty good job so the first thing I would do is actually try and uh, use the skill sets within Photoshop software itself rather than taking lots of time kind of uh, retouching everything and so on so let's kind of just choose the other image it's slightly more difficult because there's more vignetting going on uh, and so it kind of just uh, creates a few more little ish issues let's just go ahead and actually grab in exactly the same way this right hand edge like we started off the other image I've uh, missed a little bit down here so just pressing the shift key and basically just uh, dragging around that and that's going to do it so remember um, edit and fill and what we want is content aware just pressing OK now if it does kind of show either black or white it's probably because you've uh, set it to background uh, and whatever what your background color was is actually what it does so the good news is it hasn't worked as well as it did in the last image look here it's copied it in at the top no no big deal though we know that the most of the image though has actually done its job so uh, we're very very close so I'm not so much worried about that top part let's do exactly the same thing again and just go from here do the exactly the same thing backspace and enter command or going up to edit fill content aware so you can see uh, unlike the uh, the last uh, image or the first image we used it hasn't quite got the same thing so if I want to kind of cheat here just select an image around the part that you want to do and I can just go in and actually start to kind of use the patch tool so if you're finding uh, in some of the images not quite doing the same job you can actually start to look at other things like the clone stamp tool and so on and then basically start to actually kind of clone across once I've done the kind of the the basics of the clone though guess what I'm going to go back in again and just see if a content at where fill will allow it to actually do uh, a better job again what, what I hope is to it's not gonna kind of catch the hair and that did a better job so I used some different tool sets to kind of really kind of bring it alive now things like the scratches on the background which is part of its kind of look and feel and design um, if this is annoying you obviously uh, I, I think this would be annoying if we saw this in a big image so in this case once more I'm just going to pick up the patch tool 
I'm just going to select around this little part. So this this could be the same as uh, kind of um, bags around eyes or whatever. And all I'm doing is kind of selecting around an image, dragging this across, and then it's basically doing its job. So that would work in exactly the same way across the body, the face, and so on. So if Lee, Lee J, <laughs> she doesn't have any bags, but if uh, she did, and I wanted to kind of lighten all this area, uh, just below the eye, I could just actually grab it and drag it down. Okay, and that kind of does the job. Let me just step backwards. So if you didn't want to do the whole job, all right, so just drag it, yeah, to the part you want it to clone from. But instead of actually just deselecting straight away, if you want to kind of just soften that effect, so to give the client a little bit of kind of texture under the eye still, just go up into the edit and basically fade patch selection. Now, it's basically, it's the fade command, all right? And what this does is give us a slider here that we can actually say how much it kind of does it by. It's a bit like an opacity of a layer. However, as soon as you deselect from it, that option kind of goes straight away. So, we're almost in, we've, we've done the kind of the main job, which is basically uh, creating the bigger background. Um, and from here, we could basically start to actually finish the image off. So I want to soften her a little bit. I want to lighten certain areas of the photograph. And I want to make sure that when I soften the image, it's only going to be to some areas in the photograph itself. OK, so first things first, let's control J to duplicate this image. So let's just bring our layers visible. So you can see now for the first time, if I just step backwards once, that's where we were. We were working just on the background layer. Let's control J it to duplicate it. And then from here, we're going to uh, lighten and dark, uh, darken some elements. OK, so let's go and pick up the uh, dodge tool. And we're going to select to the top shadows, which it's done. I'm going to create a little bit of a bigger brush just so I can kind of work quicker. So what this is doing is kind of lightening the dark areas of the photograph. Now, the reason I'm doing this is that when I kind of start to apply one of my soften actions, I know it's basically going to make the darks very dark. So things that I want de uh, detail in like hair, I want to make sure the at least the areas of the uh, photograph that are very dark are not going to be as dark. So it takes a little bit of time. But I do want to soften it. Now in the same way, I'm going to do the exact the same thing, but I'm going to choose the high, uh, the highlights. So this is kind of grabbing anything that's highlight uh, that is white, like the feather textures and so on. And it's going to brighten those just a little bit as well. Okay, so it's just kind of dodging them. Uh, dodging in the same way, this would be the same in the dark room where we used to put our hand in front of the actual light coming through the, neg uh, the negative, uh, whereas the burn is obviously kind of burning in, making a hole in our hands and kind of allowing shade in some parts and just going from there. Okay, so that's pretty good to begin with, all right? Now we want to kind of duplicate this image and give it a little bit of softening. So just going to control J. I'm just going to go into the blur and the Gaussian blur. And I'm just going to kind of, as you can see on the skin, I just want to kind of take the edge off it. I don't want to go too much, uh, but just enough. So somewhere around between four and nine, depends on the kind of the resolution, whatever it would be and things really, um, but kind of is going to be doing our job, job for us. So let's just press OK to that. And then the next thing we would want to do before we do anything is just look at a blend mode and see what is going to be best. So as we want to affect the kind of the highlights of the image, we're either going to be into lighten, screen, or soft or soft light. Uh, soft light gives this lovely kind of almost sharpness, but still a softness at the same time. Okay. So if I just switch that on and off for a minute, you can see the difference there. And now you can see I was getting ready for it to kind of blacken my black. So I want to kind of reduce that more. How am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to pick up a, uh, a mask. And at this stage, I want to invert the mask. If I just go con select on the mask and control I, that will inverse the mask. So now the softening effect hasn't been applied to the actual face. OK, so to apply the softening look, I want to be for brush. And I want to make sure that white is going to be on top. So let's just kind of um, go in here now and just start to paint on the face and if we feel it's just a little bit too um, 
saturated we'll kind of go into that now in the middle now I would say in fact what we really want to do is actually apply the softness to the whole image and perhaps and then basically um, paint it out so in other words I'm painting the softness on the skin here but in fact what I'd want it would do is probably paint it across the whole image itself right so there's the kind of the before and after it's very very subtle as you can see here um, but that's what we've just done the effect if I just press the shift key on the mask that kind of switches the mask off and that's what would have been applied if I'd done it to the whole image so just pressing that shift key again and once more we're pretty much there so remember the blend modes them, themselves will do a different job for you no matter what if you need to go in and awfully, obviously soften in a lot more of the kind of the uh, the skin, you're going to go in there and actually blur uh, blur this a lot more. All right. So again, I could basically just Control J, duplicate that fully. Um, I could duplicate that fully, as I said, and basically then turn this into perhaps uh, normal. And remember, that's going to, if I just switch this off here, that's going to actually add all the blur effect that we can see coming through. So in this case, if I just go ahead and I delete that mask, and then if I just go in now and basically select on the actual um, part of the body that I want, let's do that once more let's just uh, control J it or drag it down we'll just get rid of the um, mask itself we'll turn it into normal light that's the blur okay that's the softness on the skin that we're trying to do and then what we're trying to do is actually just paint uh, a little bit more of this in so in other words I'm just now going to just press the alt key when I press uh, onto the mask and that will actually give me an inverted mask straight away now B for brush D for default and then that would be putting the white on top and now I can start to actually just blur out the kind of the parts of the skin fully that I want you can see how cold she was in studio 2 here Uh, X, uh, I've just kind of gone over the strap there just a little bit. I want to kind of bring that back as you can see. All right. And then once more, let's go in and press X again to put white on top. Slightly bigger brush. And just start to actually work through here. So if you've got models with some marks or whatever it'd be and things, obviously, you know, clients models alike, nobody really wants to actually be kind of seeing it. So let's just kind of go in there, as I said, and just soften down just a little bit more. So remember, this is the no blend mode, so it's going to affect it a lot more. But we're going to just uh, reduce this down a touch now. So pretty much if we look at um, the shadowing on the side here, we can pretty much see what is actually being softened and what isn't. So if we were to look close into the face here, it's way too much, of course, isn't it? Yes. We can still go back and fix the eyes if we've gone over it just by pressing X, putting black on top and paint the sharpness of the eye. I would tend to actually make sure you've got the nostrils sharp, the lips sharp. Yeah, and just making sure that the eyes are sharp. Things like the eye, the eyebrows. Just, to, you know, you, we, we all take a, you know, go a little bit too hev heavy at times. But now what we'll do is actually just re reduce the opacity down just a little bit to take some of the actual uh, kind of glow away and things really. So that's the difference between the on and the off there. So with that done, we're pretty much kind of into a... Uh, a kind of a near finished image obviously some of you might want to put kind of more texture on the background whatever it would be but uh, again we've kind of just gone from that if you want to actually create a layer uh, on top of all the other layers so in other words a layer of everything visible there's a shortcut which is shift control alt e 
and that basically creates a new layer based on all visible layers uh, and so now we could switch all the other ones off and we could actually start to do even more uh, kind of effects to it so if you fancied it just uh, well in fact I want to just do a little bit of uh, uh, less color um, I could either apply it across everything below or I could just go in and go okay uh, control J and that's basically uh, control U for bring up the sat uh, the saturation. So I'm working in a destructive way here a minute, but this is just on this one layer. Just going to knock the sat uh, the saturation just a little bit. So we've applied just that kind of minus out of that one layer, and that has affected just that one layer, of course. So it is a destruction in there rather than actually using an adjustment layer. So what we did was, of course, we looked at how to increase the actual um, background itself. Then we looked at the dodging and burning of images to make them lighter and darker amongst the scenes. So in other words, we can just actually click on the mid-tone here, make it bigger to brighten the face just a touch more. We can go in and brighten the shadow areas like the wings, the hair, and the pants just a touch more on the bra not forgetting the highlights to bring out the texture within the bra and the actual uh, hair and uh, texture of the wings as well and then from there of course what what we did we added a bit of a subtlety as far as the kind of the uh, uh, softness was concerned I basically went in and I created it but if you've got actions here you could basically uh, work it uh, in whatever way you want the different actions will have a dramatic effect on them so once you start to really make your a actions you really do start to understand how they work and that's the key thing and how they kind of blend together so you might find that uh, actions that you've made you might need to step backwards so that you can go in and basically just go and change the more of the opacity of the image or go in and uh, remember B for brush, D for default, X to put black on top. So you start to add, uh, sorry, hide or add in more of the effect as such really. So if I want more of it kind of around her or less of the effect you can work in that way so that's a quick way how you can kind of take an image that perhaps wasn't shot perfectly in camera because of either background or situation or whatever it would be and you can take it to a next level hope you enjoy this film see you on the next one